to everyone at home and at work listening today. Today is Monday, the 15th of November, 2021, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing by the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, or CCSA. Before turning to some of the points that were raised in the Thai briefing concluded just now, let me start today with an update on improvements to the Thailand Pass system and our efforts to continue to facilitate the application process for entry into Thailand. Many of you with friends and family entering the country may already be aware of the latest updates that were outlined by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson at the end of last week. But to ensure that we reach as wide an audience as possible, uh, we'd like to share these updates as well as updated statistics on the applications for you briefly today. First and foremost, let me, on behalf in particular of the agencies directly responsible for the system, express our gratitude and thanks to all of you who have shared your comments and concerns with the system in its first couple weeks of operation. We are entering our third week today and your feedback is and will continue to be very valuable as it enables the relevant agencies to improve the system and ensure that it is indeed responsive to the needs of our international travelers. As the MFA spokesperson mentioned a few days ago, the Digital Government Development Agency, which is in charge of the technical side of the system, has been hard at work preventing hackers from disrupting the system. Fortunately, they have been successful and will continue to monitor the system for possible external interference. So the new features that were mentioned at the end of last week to accommodate users and applicants include the long-awaited function to log in to check on the status of applications yourself, and secondly, a function to download the Thailand Pass QR code directly mm -hmm. from the system without having to wait for a confirmation email that sends you the QR code. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Digital Government Development Agency are also expediting solutions to other issues we have found with the system. Namely, and although applicants would be able to download the QR codes by themselves, the agencies continue to coordinate with the email servers in cases where emails from the Thailand Pass system are not reaching their destination. And also, although the pace of approvals has steadily increased, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in particular is coordinating with other countries to request their public key infrastructure, or PKI. This enables a more automated approval of the digital vaccine certificates. So once again, obtaining these PKI from countries significantly reduces the consideration time for applicants. In the meantime, the Department of Disease Control of the Ministry of Public Health has also increased the number of officials tasked to manually verify vaccine certificates on the system. And we are seeing a positive impact from that as we now see the gap between number of applications and the number of approvals steadily decreasing. There is shortly a slide up for you as a reminder of any further inquiries you may have on the Thailand Pass system, which may be directed to the call center. You have that number on screen. That call center has 30 call lines and also the three mobile numbers that you have there on screen. Those mobile numbers are open 24 hours to accommodate questions coming in from all of the all over the world, as may be. There's also an email there that you can see on screen, support at tp.consular.go.th. Um, and as alluded to earlier, let me now share some statistics with you on the number of applications coming in. There should be a screen up shortly. Let me just uh, proceed, and there we have it. As of 8 a.m. this morning, we have logged a total of 190,598 applications. 
through the Thailand Pass system. Of that number, a total of 150,966, that's almost 151,000, have been approved. And of that number, 75,944 were auto-approved. During 1 to 14 November, and this was also shared just now in the Thai briefing, 50,074 travelers entered Thailand. Of this number, the majority, which is 36,066 travelers, entered via the test and go or quarantine exemption scheme. 11,714 entered via the sandbox scheme and 2,294 entered with quarantine, meaning those who were not vaccinated or not completely vaccinated. Out of the total number of travelers in that time period, only 56 tested positive for COVID-19, or the equivalent of 0.11%, which means that the majority of incoming travelers are COVID-free. Um, top five countries entering Thailand at the moment from most to least number are US, UAE, Germany, UK, and Japan. And this was mentioned in the Thai briefing just now. Let me turn to a recap very quickly on the revised COVID-19 measures. And you will have in front of you now the rezoning of disease control areas and COVID-19 measures from the CCSA general meeting last Friday. And this will come into effect tomorrow, Tuesday, the 16th of November. The maximum and strict controlled areas or the dark red zone list that you have, we have on screen for you have been reduced from seven to six provinces. Jantanabuli has been moved to the maximum controlled area, which is the red zone, which now comprises 39 provinces. The rest remains the same. The curfew from 2300 hours to 300 hours, 3 a.m., in the dark red zone has been extended to 30 November and is subject to review before the end of this month. And as was widely reported in the news in the past few days, entertainment venues, pubs, bars, and karaoke's remain closed, unfortunately, until 15 January 2022. That's next year, or, or very early next year, I might add. However, as of tomorrow, the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration has announced that more restaurants and eateries will be allowed to serve alcoholic beverages following the lifting of restrictions on venues certified by the Department of Health. Thus, as of tomorrow, venues with the, and I quote, Thai Stop COVID Plus certification will be allowed to serve alcoholic beverages, similar to businesses that have the SHA or Safety and Health Administration certification from the Ministry of Tourism and Sports. Lastly, international travelers are still required to take a COVID-19 test, which includes one RT-PCR test upon arrival and one ATK if they have symptoms or on day six or seven, which is effective until 30th of November. Let me now turn to prox progress, excuse me, in vaccinations. And you have an, we have a new slide up for you for that. You can see on the slide that as of yesterday, we administered 545,174 doses of vaccines, increasing the accumulated number of vaccinations to over 85 million doses. 63% of Thailand's population have now received their first dose and 51.2% have now received their second dose. The general situation in Thailand as of today, we have 6,343 cases of new infections, which brings the total accumulated number to 2,024,753 cases. 94, a little over 94,000 
of which 417 are in critical condition and on ventilators. New recoveries are outpacing the number of new infections, and that number stands at 7,663 cases. The number of new fatalities stands at 45 cases, and it remains 1% of the total number of infections. Of the 45 new fatalities today, 31 cases, or 69%, are the elderly, age 60 years or over. 12 cases, or 27%, are younger than 60 years old and with chronic diseases. And the remaining two fatalities have no chronic disease. Also, of the 45 new fatalities today, 39 cases, or 87%, were not vaccinated, which is a significantly high number. And the reason why we continue to advocate vaccination for everyone who is eligible and able. As a matter of fact, and this was mentioned in the Thai briefing just now, on the week of 27th November to the 5th of December, there will be an active campaign to actively promote vaccinations. We are starting with the 27th of November because that date is significant as the date of the establishment of the Ministry of Public Health. With regard to the overall COVID-19 situation as well, approximately 19% of the cases are found in Bangkok and the surrounding provinces. 19% are found in the southern border provinces and 62% are found in the remaining 67 provinces. On screen now, we will have, as we usually do, the top 10 provinces with COVID-19 cases, which includes Bangkok and the southern border provinces. As alluded to earlier, a very quick recap of what was discussed in the CCSA briefing this morning, as shared in the Thai briefing, there were a number of issues raised. Um, first, the CCSA continue to follow up on progress in the provinces with regard to vaccination and ensuring COVID-free settings and venues. Um, secondly, the CCSA this morning analyzed the trend in the number of infections based on the statistics from the past seven days. And the good news that we have to share with you today is that the total number of cases is on a downward trend. However, the situation in the maximum and strictly controlled zone is still fluctuating and still, of course, a cause for concern. The CCSA meeting this morning also noted the emergence of new clusters in high-risk venues, which includes penitentiaries among healthcare workers in the fisheries sector, construction camps, military and police training centers, factories, businesses, markets, religious ceremonies, which include, of course, the end of Buddhist Lent ceremonies and funeral services, as well as some clusters from educational institutions and communities. To sum up, the CCSA is concerned and following the emergence of new clusters, which are due mostly to increased social gatherings and continues to encourage the public to strictly follow disease control guidelines so that the number of cases will continue to decrease. There, has, there was also an emphasis made on avoiding areas or venues that are overcrowded. The holidays at year's end are coming up and we hope for a chance to celebrate with friends and family. So with that, uh, a small, or not small, an encouragement, a strong encouragement for us to work together um, to get there safely. This is all I have for today. Please take care, stay safe, and have a good weekend ahead of you. Sawadee ka.